This is a quick video about a really interesting technology to improve jog detection by preventing false indications caused by multipath. So here's the Engage A-Scope application configured to show just propagation. And it's using the curved earth model right now, the ideal one. But if I click this button, a feature is added that makes the results look pretty much like air carry. And I found a bunch of unclassified slides that show real air carry results, even though the, the, like it's showable because the data are anonymized. And it looks like a good match. So here uh, I can move the missile up and down and we can see these traveling nulls that we've seen before. And we know that multipath is a game of inches. That means when a null occurs for a certain missile range, what I mean by that is that at, at some altitude and frequency, then a small change in missile altitude at that range and frequency will cause the null to fill in. And, and it can even be made to disappear entirely if the height change is enough, uh, either up or down. Now suppose that the receive antenna on board the ship is attached to a vertical rail, let's say, uh, and a motor and a gear assembly can drive the antenna up or down. Also suppose that we've built a positioning control loop that uses received power as an input, and the antenna position is always dithering up or down by a little bit, like maybe a sinusoid, and the control loop drives the antenna in a direction to increase the received power. Now, as the missile flies toward the ship, imagine that the jammer controls the vertical position of the receive antenna to maximize the input power. This animation shows antenna movement for a simple curved earth propagation model. Let's repeat that with the model configured for air carry, so there's a realistic amplitude variation on the seeker power received by the jammer. It looks like this. So I coded an ideal version of this system in the A-Scope application. And, and, and by the way, I want to show you the results, but be, one thing we have to decide first is how much the antenna, uh, antenna movement is allowed. Uh, in other words, how big the, is, how tall is the rail? So let's say it's uh, plus or minus 0 0.7 meters, just for fun. Now in practice, we wouldn't use a physical positioning control loop. Instead, a better approach is a linear array of fixed position antennas. Anyway, the results look like this for a receive antenna whose position is continuously variable. Amazing. I mean, at least for the ideal control loop, nearly all of the multipath uh, can be removed, e even for even f you know for air carry cases when we have a lot of noise on the uh, on the receive signal. Even if I move the missile up and down, the system still works. Let's try 16 gigahertz, move the missile up and down to see the effect on propagation. Turn the canceller on. Yes, it still works. Actually, a bit better. Let's change the missile height to see what happens. Yes, it still works. Let's try 35 gigahertz. We'll move the missile up and down, see the effect on propagation. Now let's turn on the canceller and again, move the missile up and down. Yes, it works. Back to X-band, 9.3 gigahertz. And here's what happens if the wind blows. Now the multipath canceller is on, and this is the effect of wind on its output. Basically, the control loop is converting a noisy multipath signal into a free space signal, a noise-free and a nearly noise-free free space signal, roughly speaking. So we're, we're, we're basically the control loop moves noise out of the received power signal and into a position loop that we don't care about because we're controlling it. So let's look at the effect of a seeker antenna pointing error. It's also called an angle jog. Uh, what does that do to the multipath canceller? Because when the seeker antenna points away from the ship, that causes the signal to fade, which in a way that could look like multipath. So how does the canceller handle that? To check this, let's run a simulation of a flying missile and manually insert seeker antenna jogs during the flight so we can see how the canceller re reacts to signal fades caused by the seeker antenna in addition to the fades that are caused by multipath. So here's a flying missile and we'll turn on the multipath canceller and then insert, manually insert an antenna jog. And we see that when the, the as the power drops, it has no effect on the um, best antenna height to cancel multipath. 
But when we change the missile altitude, it does change the orange line, which is the antenna height to cancel multipath. And here's another jog, and it has no effect on the, uh, on the height line. So in conclusion, this video has showed results for uh, a kind of a thought experiment where we have a receive antenna which is whose position, vertical position, is continuously variable. But in practice, what we would really, a real world implementation would be a linear array, maybe a couple of meters tall with a certain number of uh, fixed antennas in it. And you'd have to have some signal processing, maybe just at the simplest level, just pick out the highest power and that will cancel multipath. So, and I have looked at that. I have uh, played around with uh, different antenna heights and different number of antennas in the linear array. And it's surprising. You need surprisingly few uh, antennas in the array before the results start to look rather a lot like the continuously variable antenna case, the, the thought experiment case. I've heard garden variety sea skimmer or high diver from X band up to uh, KA band I'd say four to seven antennas, maybe a couple of meters tall. And the final concluding point is, it's an important one, is that although I've been talking about spatial diversity, you can get exactly the same effect with frequency diversity. If you had a cooperative transmitter and it sent a broadband signal, or probably better, much better, if it sent a series of what I called, a set of what I called pilot signals for the I described them in the counter IED ECM protection range estimator about 10 years ago. That will also work. So we can trade spatial diversity for frequency diversity and get the same effect. And probably the best approach is to combine the two. And this concludes uh, overview of one of four ideas for a multipath canceller.